Why hello there and welcome to another Socket Sanctuary episode where we build the best sub $150 esports gaming PC on YouTube. Oh that's a bold claim you say, yes, yes it is, but the facts are in the frame rates. So what makes this build better than the innumerable cheap PC builds on YouTube that are currently out there? Well, thank you for asking. Unlike most cheap-ass PC builds on YouTube, we are actually including a valid copy of Windows in our build, which is around $100 value right there. In addition, we aren't using an AMD Athlon APU or their equally as bad dual-core APUs. We are going to be using a proper quad-core with a discrete graphics card, and we're going to be including Windows, as I've said before, and it's also going to have a respectable performance in all of the titles that we're testing. Speaking of which, the esports games that we will be benching will be Counter-Strike Global Offensive, World of Warships, Rocket League, and finally, Overwatch, all at 1080p. Alright, enough idle chit-chat, let's get started with the build. The first thing you will want to do is pick up an old Dell Optiplex 780. I got mine on eBay for $85. When searching for these, you should be able to find them with an Intel Q6600 quad core in them. In addition, most old Dells like the one that I got either come with a valid Windows 7 install already on them, but even if they don't, many of them still have their Windows registration key on the top of the case right next to the Dell customer support numbers. Also, if you have any doubts about buying old used Dells, uh, these are workstations and they are over-engineered in both terms of quality and use, and they are very reliable despite the fact that they are used. The specs for the Optiplex 780 are a Q6600 running at 2.4GHz, 4GB of RAM, a 250GB, 7200RPM hard drive, and a 240W power supply with a, uh, who cares, Dell motherboard. As you'll notice, there's no graphics card in it, so we'll need to find one. However, there are a couple of restrictions that we'll have to be aware of when looking for graphics cards. If you'll notice the position and orientation of the PCI port, it unfortunately limits us to a single slot card. In addition, we'll be limited to a GPU that does not require an additional power plug due to our relatively meager power supply. So with that in mind, I embarked on the search for a cheap, single slot, power efficient GPU. I found that MSI makes one variant of the 750Ti that would fit this bill, however at $120 this card would cost more than the entire PC, so I decided to move on. There were also variants of the GT740 and 730 that would work, however they were still quite pricey, so I decided I needed a new approach to this search. The Optiplex 780 is a workstation computer, and I happen to know that workstation GPUs are still frequently found in single slot variants, so I decided to look in that direction. And lo and behold, there it sat. Sunlight shone upon it from the adjacent window, almost as though it were a gift from God himself. A Fire Pro V5800. I managed to get this card for $33 on eBay. You can often find them for sale for around that price point if you're willing to get it used. However, if you're more of an NVIDIA fan, you can find a Quadro 2000 for around the same price point, and they perform only a little bit worse than their AMD counterparts. The Fire Pro that we got is a single slot card that requires no additional PCI power plugs. It has 1 gig of GDDR5, 800 stream processors running at 700 megahertz, and is DirectX 11 compatible. Just to give you a reference for performance, it performs in line with the AMD HD 6770, or a bit better than the Nvidia GT740. It's really quite a great deal for the price. Now let's install it and revel in the budget performance we're about to behold. Installation is simple. Simply open up the side of the case. Move this tab right here, slot the card in, lock the card in place with that tab, and done! Now sit back and enjoy your new cheap ass computer. Before we get on to the benchmarks, let's summarize the parts and cost. For around $85, you should be able to find an Optiplex 780 that comes with Windows. 
it should get you a Q6600 quad core processor, four gigs of RAM, a 250 gigabyte, 7200 RPM hard drive, a 240 watt power supply, a Dell motherboard, and a really well built case. Then for an additional 30 to 40 dollars, you should be able to get a Fire Pro V5800, bringing our total cost to around 115 to 125 dollars. Enough talk, onto the benchmarks. Let's start off with Counter-Strike, running at 1080p maximum settings. As you can see, the game runs great with a maximum of 153 frames per second, an average of 112, and a minimum of 65. You can run this game with ease, in fact. You can even stream or record videos of CSGO with this computer without risking frame drops. This is all well and good, however. CSGO isn't that demanding. How about something a bit tougher? How about World of Warships at 1080p high settings? World of Warships still runs all right on this computer. Running at 1080p on the default high preset, this computer manages to pull a respectable 62 FPS max with a decent 26 FPS minimum and runs at 39 frames per second most of the time. The next game we will be benching is Rocket League. At 1080p maximum settings, this game performs almost flawlessly, with an average of 51 FPS, a max of 63, and a minimum of only 34. You can easily play this game with all settings cranked all the way up. And finally, we get to Overwatch. Overwatch is a bit more challenging to get running well on a low-end system without it looking like utter garbage. However, this system, as you can see, can run it respectably. At 1080p low settings with a 100% render scale, this computer manages an average of 37 FPS with a minimum of 24 and a maximum of 63. As you can see, the game looks and performs great on this system. So there you have it, a $120 system that includes Windows and that can play games fairly decently. I actually have this very rig set up in my office so that when I have a friend over we can play some games together. And I would highly recommend it. However, if you have any comments or suggestions on how the build could be improved, I would love to hear it. Well that's all for now, so thank you folks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.